If you look at traditional martial art, the technique is not very realistic. Wing Chun, for example, the guard is so low, the technique is chest level, isn't you supposed to cover your head and protect your head, right? That's the first thing they teach you in boxing. So why our ancestors didn't think of it? Are they stupid? Well, probably not. If you put weapons into their hand, it just makes more sense. For example, all of the low guard, all of the chest level techniques just make perfect sense with a double knife, right? The Pat Chiam To. Or in Kali, for example, so many circular movements. The only reason for that is because they fight with a machete. So they don't fight empty handed. So traditional martial art probably doesn't apply well into the MMA setting. However, just pointing a finger and say the guy suck is kind of like you tell a basketball guy to play soccer and tell him how suck he is, right? It doesn't make sense. But I'm not here to pointing finger. I'm not here to blame him because that's just for loser. It doesn't bring me any value. I'm more interested about how to make traditional martial art work. So today I'm gonna examine it under two aspects, physicality and strategies. If you look at traditional martial art training method, some of them is like a thousand years old. Would you use a technology that a thousand years ago? But that is our current situations, right? Because the student just train exactly the same as the teacher passed down to them and the teacher probably does the same thing. That's why it's called traditional martial art. Back in the day, it could be the best innovation. However, no matter how good you are, if you just stand at one point, eventually people are gonna pass you, right? Like, for example, I know nothing about filming, but just buying this camera and just hit record and then it's done on the job. Something that the camera 20 years ago cannot do, right? To put it in the context of self-defense, I'm just gonna compare it with the general populations and I'm gonna use the Canadian stat because I'm living in Canada, right? More than 50% of Canadian doesn't have adequate exercise time and 20% each is like overweight and obese, right? So if you push up every day, you run five kilos every day, your physicality is already way better than the average of general populations. So you could get away with that because you got better physicality. However, doesn't you want to train the same amount but twice as good, right? I mean, more physicality is only a plus, right? But if you talk strictly about fighting in the ring, fighting another professional fighters, then obviously it's a must. It's not optional anymore because UFC, MMA, they got audience, they competitions, right? So professional fighters, they basically professional athletes. And professional athletes, they got exposed to advanced technologies. Obviously, you want to see two fighters that doesn't look like human. They fight eight rounds and their speed, their power is incredible. That's what you pay the money for, right? You're not paying the money for to seeing like two obese guys fighting each other. It's obvious, right? So if you want to compete with them, well, the only way to beat an athlete is to become one. If you're this serious, doing push-up every day is not gonna cut it. Because let's say you want to improve your speed, right? So currently you can do 20 push-ups. And after a month, you can do 30. And after another month, you can do 40, then 50, then 60, then 70, right? Obviously you get better, your muscle get better, right? However, it's not that significant improvement in terms of speed. The reason is because the more reps you do, the more endures your muscle become, right? So it's a good thing. So now your muscle can last more, but that doesn't mean that you can punch faster. Instead, if you know about basic physiologies, basic muscle adaptations, then you change to do clapping hand push-up and try to focus more on like explosiveness, then the result is night and day. So my advice is physical conditioning is as important as the technical side and training harder does not cut it. You need to train smarter. So go smarter, not go harder. If you're a professional fighter, you don't need to hear this because you probably got a strength and conditioning coach that help you. But if you're just starting out or if you cannot afford a coach, then YouTube is a great start because it's got all of the useful information that you need because these things are very basic. Trust me because I go through this. Five years ago, I used to run up the mountain near my home, eight kilos, and then I pull up, I push up every day. I train so fucking hard. But then the result is kind of plateau. Not until a friend of mine who got master in sports science, he just teach me those basic stuff about, you know, how to plan your set, how many reps, right? Which type of muscle that I want to build. 
And then after three months, my spin power went double and I only go to gym three times a week. I work less but more efficient. In terms of strategies, human behavior and culture had changed significantly. Back in the day, if somebody tried to rob you, you kill him, you run away. If somebody challenged you, you kill him, you run away. Miyamoto Musashi got his first kill when he was 13 and then he killed another 59 guys throughout his martial art career. Now imagine Mike Tyson do it, Conor McGregor do it in the modern societies, they would end up in jails, right? By Canadian law, if you want to claim your actions as a self-defense act, then you cannot exceed the force of your opponents. Which means, even though if you're really good at weapons, if the guy fight you empty hand, you cannot use the weapon. Otherwise, you go to jail, right? If somebody verbally abuse you, right, and then they want to challenge you into a fight, you take it, you fuck him up, you still end up in jail. The closest thing that legally recognized is the formal fight. If you want to fight, if you want to compete against all the professional fighters, against all the martial artists, then the closest thing is MMA. So you gotta know how to fight in MMA, right? Let's talk about ring fight first. Kung Fu or Wing Chun, for example, got a huge limitations. Back in the day with the weapon used and the killing mentality, you don't expect to fight an opponent twice. And because there's no social media either, there's no YouTube, so you don't know what Wing Chun is, you don't know what boxing is. That's why Wing Chun is designed on a limited way of fighting. And that's not bad at all because the less thing you have to train, the better you are at the certain things, right? On the other hand, MMA is a mixture of different martial arts, so the technique is varied. So you can punch, you can kick, you can wrestling, you can BJJs, which make it unpredictable. Compared to Wing Chun, you know a Wing Chun guy definitely gonna come in in a straight line and gonna chain punch you. He gonna ask for hand contact so that he can use his trapping hands, all of those stuff, right? So if you know something that gonna happen, if you could predict that, no matter how fast your opponent is, you can still beat the guy, right? To fix this, one of the key thing is you need to train different martial arts to make it vary. It doesn't mean that you need to buck like Mike Tyson, but you need to learn the footwork so that you can get into the close range to use your Wing Chun. Because one of the major issues I see with Wing Chun guy when they're on the ring is that the, con the distance control is pretty bad because they're comfortable with the close range situation. They're not comfortable with the long range and boxing, Muay Thai, those striking art that involve rotations is very good at long range. If you cannot pass the long range, how can you use all of the trapping hand techniques that you put hours and hours and hours into training? So obviously you need to get well-rounded, right? Another example is when you get into the ground, a lot of Wing Chun guy become deaf because they never trained it before. So if you in an MMA fighting setting, you need to be aware of all kind of situation that could happen within the ring fight. And if you specialize in close ring fighting in hand contact, then you can strategize your fighting style to emphasize on that. A good example of this is Jesse Clover, Bruce Lee's first student. And Bruce Lee Chickadee is well known for the speed to closing the gap so freaking fast, right? However, Jesse is a wrestling. He's a 14-time judo champion. So he's pretty good with wrestling, but he doesn't have the speed of Bruce Lee. So when he adapts Chickadee into non-classical kung fu, he put in the judo flavor into it. It's all about the pressure and control the guy balance. It's not about speed anymore. So see? You can take something and make it your own and put in your flavor. Put in what your strength is and cover your weakness. Another great example is Anderson Silva, a professional fighter. So his skill is great, no doubt about it, right? But in Wing Chun communities, he even more famous because he used Wing Chun in a ring fight. So people are like, oh, Wing Chun work, Wing Chun work. However, his Wing Chun by textbook is pretty bad. But the way he incorporated into his fighting skill is pretty awesome, it's pretty unique and that make him a better fighter. So when you look at Anderson Silva and you say, see, Wing Chun work. It only work for Anderson Silva, it doesn't work for you. So the thing that you want to do is you want to see what your weaknesses is because training on your strength only doesn't make you a better fighter because any warrior only fights on his term or not fighting at all. So it's not only you that try to put them in your game, they try to put you in their game as well. And for example, a BJJ guy, when they fight you, they will take you to the ground, so make sure you're a dead fish, right? So the key here is, how can I plan to make sure the guy is always in my hand contact area so I can use my trapping hands, which is the thing that I'm good at. The key here is cross training. Every time I see a Wing Chun guy 
play a role of the boxing and then he throw like a half decent swing i'm like oh right it's kind of insulting boxing so find a decent boxer train with him exchange knowledge with him so that you both get better at what you're training and that's it for today's guy i hope to hear your input because i know there's many great martial artists out there and feel free to correct me if i'm wrong because my knowledge is kind of limited right also hit the comment and tell me how i can improve on deliver a better content so that i can support you guys better and remember to hit the like and the subscribe button as the way to support me remember to train hard eat well have a good week and i see you in the next episode